This is Cooper. He is a very high energy dog. He is a uh, about a two year old uh, uh, German Shorter Pointer. I, I mentioned this in the video above. I call this a professional level dog. These guys need a lot of exercise, and he was kind of demonstrating some behaviors as illustrations why they need a lot of exercise. They're they're hunting dogs. They have a lot of stamina, but if we don't get that energy sp uh, spent, it manifests and comes out in a lot of different ways that we don't necessarily like. So the very first thing we talked about was exercise and creative ways of exercising him. First thing I talked about was next, uh, basically some alternative ways of exercising him and starting an exercise journal. Exercise journal is just a spiral notebook. You write the date at the top of a brand new piece of paper, you write down the time and how long the run was. He, and right now his guardian runs with him, which is great. But that's not gonna be enough. So we, exercise, uh, we put uh, down the time and the quantity or duration, uh, quantity of repetitions or the duration, if it's, a, if it's like a running, we do the, the length of the exercise. And then if he has, like like just a minute ago, he was bouncing around barking, demand barking. Write that, we call that demand barking. Write that, okay, uh, 440, 445, demand barking for two minutes. Um, people were doing this outside. Uh, there were reflections of the light or whatever it is. So you don't have to tell a story, but put enough detail where you understand what's going on. Um, and so all the exercises that you're gonna do, and I'm gonna talk about some creative ways of exercising here in a minute, you write down the time and how much or how long and, then at the, and, and, also, and also the other noteworthy thing that happened throughout the day. Then at the end of the day, you give him a letter grade, A through F. If he got anything other than an A, the next day you play around with the elements. Instead of doing maybe 30 up-downs in the stairs, in his case, probably like 130, <laughs> um, but then maybe you go 150. Or if it's really low grade, maybe we do, uh, instead of doing the stairs three times a day, maybe we do that five times a day. So you wanna find, the idea is to find the cocktail or the right amount of exercise the dog needs to feel fulfilled. Uh, so some of the uh, ways that I like to go over exercise, one of the first ones I usually suggest to my clients who have stairs available is a doggy stairmaster. And the stairs has a bit of a bend in it, so it's a little bit different than we normally do it. Uh, Cooper, puppy. Actually, grab that, grab that bag for me and I'll just have it here and that'll keep him the shot anyways. I have my bag of goodies and he just wants to get in here like there's no tomorrow. Uh, it smells like a lot of other dogs. All right, um, so what I do is I usually show the dog have a treat and do this with an empty stomach for all exercise. Remember, it takes about an hour and a half before the food is out of the stomach and they can, it can twist and can rip the stomach or pressurize and explode, it can be fatal. So about an hour and a half after, exercise, after eating before you exercise him or just exercise him before you feed him. So the idea is I show him that I get a treat, throw it to the bottom of the stairs, uh, and you can do a one landing at a time or just have you call him if you have two people and we get to the bottom of the stairs, come up with a funny word that needs to go down call it like Australia. And then call him back to the top of the stairs. And then this time when he comes up, maybe we call it Canada. Remember, anytime you give the treat, the treat could go in the mouth first and you should hear the command word and only the command word after. Not, good boy Cooper, sit down, just sit, just come, just up, just down, Australia, whatever you're gonna say. So the first time you do this, do it with an empty stomach and do it until he stops going up and down. And you count each down up as one. And I'm not kidding, it'll probably be over 200 up-downs before he says, you're crazy, I'm not going down there anymore. Once we know what his maximum number is, then we want to exercise about 50 to 75% of his maximum number multiple times a day. So the Stairmaster, Doggy Stairmaster is one. He likes to play fetch, but like a lot of people, they hadn't taught, uh, his guards hadn't taught him how to drop, so they were taking it from him physically, which makes the dog not bring it to you and stay away. So I showed the guardian how to teach him to drop, which is super duper simple. If he has this bone in his mouth, here, we'll do it, try to do it right now. Don't just give a dog something. They won't want it if you just give it to them. You gotta tease them a little bit. Drop, that's how you teach drop. You wait for the dog to have an object in their mouth that is a low value item, something that can have at any point. Hold the treat against their nose, touch their nose, and just hold it here, don't give any commands. Wait, as soon as he drops it, pop in his mouth and say the word drop. Then let him give it his object again. Most of us, the more we try to take the object, the, more they want, the less they want to give it to us. So just condition him, just dropping stuff means I'm gonna, you're gonna get hooked up. All right, um, so fetch is a great one. The Guardians may want to invest in an iFetch. It was on Shrub Tech. It's a machine that lets the dog play fetch with itself, would be great for him. Um, let me see, if you're doing a fetch yourself, if there's a hallway back there, the Guardians can play fetch from here, where really where the camera is, and throw it back and forth. Um, something else we could do is um, uh, dog skiing, which is my favorite way. And I think if you guys can figure out how to do this, you will love doing it. Now, for dog skiing, make sure you get you practice. Since you do run with him, do, go do it on a run and just practice the runs. So every time when you're running down the, uh, down the street, when you take a right, as you turn right, say right as you turn. 
when you're taking a left, as you turn left, say left. Um, every once in a while, stop and tell him stop and give him a treat. Be careful about the treats when you're doing this. Again, we don't have too much stuff in the stomach, so <coughs> little pieces. Um, I also have a walking command. For me, when I want to go full blast, I say charge. If I want to uh, go normally, I say walking. And then I also have a, uh, a, a command where it needs to start, which I say launch. And then the dog takes off. Um, make sure if you're doing it on side streets, you practice stopping at every street that you come to, especially when you don't need it. It's when you need it that you don't want to have to practice a decent amount at that point. So if the dog just learns we get on the other street, I just stop and sit, and then we continue again when I hear him launch, and that's what he'll continue doing. Um, dog skiing is a wonderful way to, to learn his energy, and right now he's uh, being a pill. He's jumping around. It could mean that he needs a potty, which we'll talk about in a sec, or it may, may mean he needs some exercise. So don't interpret this as him being naughty. Interpret this as his way of saying, somebody needs to exercise me. Either you guys exercise me, or I'm going to run around the place and bark and jump on things and exercise myself. It's much more efficient if you guys do it. Now, for potty training, um, take him out. When he, has, when he starts to hear poop, say the word business when he starts to it, but have a treat in your hand, and don't even look at him when he barks, because if you do, that's validating that. That's demand barking. So when he starts to hear poop, you say business. Same word for both. When he gets done, put that treat in his mouth within three seconds of him finishing, stopping, and then say the word business a second time. That way, when he's doing this, you can say business, and he looks at you and just continue, and he just looks at you, then you know it's a no. But you say business, he gets it really animated like he is now. That's his way of saying, yes, I'd like to go. Um, now, we went outside, we went on a, a structured walk. I showed the guardians uh, my, my five rules for a structured walk. I also showed them how to use a martingale collar instead of a prong collar. Unfortunately, they went to a trainer who said that it's the only way the dog will listen. Uh, it's not. Uh, we can teach him to walk with a loose leash, but it's going to take practice at it uh, and actually teaching him how to do it. So I showed the martingale and how to use the structured walk. Uh, we kind of ran out of time, so I didn't get a chance to go over the, the loose leash walking. If you want to have me come back and work on that, let me know. Otherwise, you can find videos on that. Uh, it just takes a lot of practice. But let me know later on if you want to work on that. I would rather have you guys focus because I know this, the separation anxiety is the most important thing. I cover a lot in three hours. And people have a tendency to only do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They don't get a complete done. Let's focus on his separation anxiety, listening to you, structure. The, the stru five rules for a structured walk and the martingale are going to make you uh, have a lot more control in the walk. And you can use the martingale for running. I know a lot of the twists that I showed you, a lot of people do that. Uh, make sure you get yourself a four foot, just a web leash that's one width, one inch width, same width as the collar. And uh, apply that special twist of leash. Um, and I like a four foot because you don't have to wrap it around your hand so many times. I have videos for the structured walk. You forget how to do that or any of the other stuff. I'm going to talk. If I say video during the rest of this video, because I'm going to try to do this quickly, if I say video, that means there's a video on my website for it. If you can't find it, don't even look. You did, you're doing great. Um, if you can't find it, message me and I'm happy to send you it. Now, this is demand barking. So, this should be in the exercise journal and this should be an indication to you we need to exercise it more. The reason we start the journal is to identify how much exercise and how frequently. After about two weeks, we start noticing, you know what, every time it's longer than two and a half hours when we exercise him, that's when this stuff happens. So let's make sure we exercise him every two hours and 15 minutes or sooner. And if you beat him to the punch, he practices not getting into this behavior. Right now, he's practicing getting this behavior and practicing this behavior to get a walk or to go outside. The longer the more he does this, the more he will continue. The guardian is doing a good job not even looking at him because all he wants is your attention. If he, if he barks and you look at him, or you turn away, or you shove him down, it's working and he will continue more. If this doesn't work, but we also pet with the purpose of the passive training, we start offering those behaviors instead. Now, I'm going to redirect his attention by having him come over here and say, oh, he was barking the whole time. So, uh, we want to repet him with the purpose of passive training. So, he's nudging me, so if he wants this, sit, sit. Now, normally when he's nudging you, what I would do is if I pet him when he's nudging me, I'm telling him, yes, you're the boss of me. So when he nudges me, I go like this. Sit. Sit. Pet him under his chin to keep that nose up in the air and say the word sit and only the word sit. So what we're telling you is that when you tell me to sit, I say it once. If he doesn't know within three seconds, he's not getting my attention and he doesn't get a second opportunity. I'm going to wait at least one minute before I say it again. Playing hard to get with your dogs is a powerful motivator. Most of us just give our dogs what they want if they just beg enough. We don't get that at work. You know, uh, the cop, if, I just hound him, if I just hound the cop, he'll, he'll, give, he'll not give me the ticket. That doesn't work for us. It works for dogs because we give in. So don't give in. 
I'm just using this to redirect him, not giving it a treat because that would be rewarding him for doing this. And I normally wouldn't even engage with this, but I don't want to have a barking video the whole time. So uh, petting with a purpose is if you want to pet the dog or he's demanding attention from you, you give him a counter order. When he does it, you pet him. If he doesn't do it, he doesn't get anything. No correction, no reward, no punishment, just nothing. After a while, he'll come and start sitting in front of you to prepay for attention. Sit. When he does, make sure you pet him on his chin and say sit. And the pet him wants to as long as you want. So he just has to do something to change his state to earn the affection mm -hmm. or prepay for it. And that's what he'll start doing. So start coming sitting in front of you to prepay for the attention. Um, remember to use watchword of paycheck. So if he's petting, if, if you come in the room and see somebody's petting him, he's standing up, ah, paycheck, they would stop petting him. And then tell him to sit. And then pet him and say, actually, I asked him to sit, but you missed it, blah, blah, blah. I say, I use testify, crash, for passive training. That's passive training. I didn't ask him to sit or to lay down. I didn't entice him. He did it on his own, but within three seconds of him doing it, I petted him and said the word, well, I think I said sit, actually, but it should be crash or down or whatever his command word is. So every time he comes to you, pet him and say, come. Every time he lays down, pet him and say, crash. Every time he goes to his dog bed, call it uh, set uh, or what do we call it? Lot. Lot. And every time he goes in the kennel, uh, call it stage. And every time he takes his first bite of food, come up with your whatever the word is you want to use. I say grub, chow, feast, and lasagna. So each dog, when it takes its first bite of food, is when they hear the word lasagna. Let me have that. Just toss it my way. Thank you. Um, all my stuff is going to be over here by the end of this video. <laughs> um, so uh, do the same thing with, with, with drinking water. Even though we don't need him to drink water, what if you're on a hike? Being able to tell him what drink water means is super easy. Every time he takes a drink of water, just call it Heineken or whatever your favorite beer is. Um, after a while, every time I hear Heineken, I'm drinking water. So that must mean I go drink water. So the more that we come up with these associations, the easier it is for us to communicate what we want and uh, having to understand what we want. Now, understanding what we want is one part of it, but does he incline to listen to us? That's the more important side almost. So the second thing is, does he want to listen to us? Right now, he didn't really have any rules. And so he kind of does whatever he wants. So imagine how you would behave, behave if you had no rules, no consequences, and you've got to tell your boss when to pet you. So that's basically the scenario that he has. So what we're going to do is he's going to now earn his pets down uh, by doing things to earn them. But another great way for us to demonstrate that we are leaders is to start acting like leaders by enforcing rules consistently. So again, and, uh, one of the rules would be uh, not being allowed to be in front of this table when guardians are eating food. Another one, not being allowed on the furniture. Not being allowed around the table when we're eating food. Not being allowed to be in the kitchen when we're preparing food. Now remember to practice ahead of time. Microwave that roast beef or whatever it is. There you go. Um, and so that you can practice cooking. When you're not actually cooking, you're just watching and helping him stay out of the kitchen using those escalating consequences video. Um, also, petting with purpose video, passive training video. Um, I went over a, a leave it exercise, another video for that. So to get any of the videos, just go to Dog on Problems, click on the dog training tips. On the right side of the page, there's a search box. Type in structured walk, petting with a purpose, passive training, structured feeding, um, uh, leave it exercise. Um, and there'll be videos for me doing this with other dogs you can watch. Um, also, make sure that you are eating before you feed him. Try not to turn away when he jumps up on you. When he jumps on you, just cross your arms like this and look up and freeze and become boring. When he's jumping up and he's trying to elicit a response, if you turn away, then it works. When you cross your arms and freeze, well, shoot, I want his attention, but when I jump up, him, he gets boring. That's the opposite of what I want. And it, the more that we pet with the purpose of passive training, the more that he's going to be in the habit of doing those things instead. The more that we enforce rules, the more he sees us acting like a leader. Now, I also have a, a calm leashing exercise. Right now, he doesn't, he's not wild about the leash, but it's because of the negative devices. But eventually, he'll get excited for the walk. If he does, uh, go to the search page and type in calm leash. You can teach your dog how to be calm on the leash. You can also type in loose leash walking. Um, uh, I don't know if I have a lot of videos for that. I have more behavior videos than I do training videos. Um, but exercising, and remember, before the walk is going to produce a much more efficient walk. Um, let me see, what else? Um, what are the escalating consequences? Again, there's a video for that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this is I have to potty. So we're going to wrap up this video. Is there anything else? Oh, weighted door. That's another great weighted door. And it showed you how to do what I was showing at the door to get him. Come here, buddy. Where do you go? From? You want one more? Come here. Come. See, I'm using an example of how many different versions did I just say have come. So remember that we use a lot of versions of that. So instead, 
Come up with a list of the official command words, tape it somewhere, and then call it vocabulary. If somebody's saying come here, and you're like, vocabulary, the word is come. Sit, come. Well, we come up here. So uh, call it door will help. And remember to stop short on the, on the walk. Start off with those 10 sits, at first every five, up to five steps, eventually every 10 steps, and eventually, like your neighbor said, every once in a while we just stop for no reason, tell them to sit, and then we give them a treat for doing that. Well, this super duper high energy German children pointer is Cooper, and this is Cooper's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you need it.